And now we have next uh, one skin, and that's Carolina Reese Oliveira. So thank you so much for the invite to be here today. It's a pleasure for me uh, to present the work that we have been doing at One Skin uh, in the area of senotherapeutics as a new strategy to prolong skin health. Uh, there, there has been a lot of excitement around cellular senescence, and we do believe that skin can be one of the first tissues to be benefited from this technology. And to many, uh, skin has still be, been primarily related to beauty and aesthetics and the connection uh, with overall health and longevity has been overlooked. Uh, but if we think better, skin is our largest organ and uh, it's also the first organ to reflect the signs of aging. And because of the size of this organ, uh, as the skin ages and this inflammation that comes with this process can heavily influence our body's levels of inflammation. And this can be one of the factors that can drive uh, chronic diseases. So we strongly believe that by keeping our skin healthy, uh, we can also help to prevent or delay the onset of several age-related disease. So now we have a more I would say compelling reason to treat our skin than only beauty and aesthetics. And in order to treat uh, skin aging, we need to understand the root cause. And it's very well known that the accumulation of senescent cells in several tissues uh, is associated with several age-related disease. And skin is no different. Uh, the accumulation of senescent cells in the skin has been associated with wrinkles, sagging, and even skin cancer. So we do believe that by targeting senescent cells, this could be a more effective strategy to promote this skin rejuvenation from the inside out. And uh, very similar to what we see in our healthcare system today, the current solutions targeting skin uh, rejuvenation, they are still focused on covering up the symptoms of aging and not really treating the, the aging itself. And very often, a lot of those interventions, they can be causing more damage and in the long term, they can be accelerating aging instead of preventing. So One Skin wants to do different. We want to develop a product that's primarily focused on targeting the underlying cause of skin aging. And as a result, we promote a healthier looking and a better and a more functional skin. So how we do that? Uh, first, I, so I will explain how our platform works, but uh, I wanna make sure to highlight that we, we make sure to have only work with relevant models that can allow, allow for translational science. So we are not only growing human skin uh, in the lab. So here you can see how similar is the skin, the organotypic skin that we grow compared to a natural human skin. We are able to replicate the main layers of the skin from the derms, epiderms, up to the stratum corneum but we are also replicating the skin aging process by using cells derived from donors of diverse ages. We are able to replicate a very young skin, such as a neonatal skin to a very aged skin. And we can clearly see the difference uh, in this aging process in terms of the morphology, in terms of the tissue organization, so for example, the epidermal layer gets thinner and we can also track this process in the molecular level, uh, evaluating, for example, genes that are related to aging and inflammation that go up and other genes that are related to proliferation and extracellular matrix that goes down. So the second part of our platform is how we measure any intervention that we are developing. So in the same line that was presented now by Robert, we have developed our own uh, skin specific molecular clock uh, where we trained this algorithm using uh, more than 500 samples of the skin, uh, training the, evaluating the methylation markers, and then we got an algorithm that was more accurate to predict 
skin biological age because we know that tissue specificity uh, largely influences the accuracy of those algorithms. So this was published on clinical epigenetics and it's also available for researchers at this uh, website, moclock.com. So the third piece of our platform is a cell-based screening platform uh, where we select uh, cellular senescence as our main target and then we chose uh, two main markers to evaluate the level of cellular senescence, SCA beta gal that's largely used uh, to, to screen uh, molecules targeting senescent cells, and also ATRX for Psi, that's the enzyme that's required when the cells undergo senescence and they accumulate in the nuclei in the form of foci. So now that we, we know the profile of like fibroblasts when they are young, and when they are like already aged, uh, we then have tested more than a thousands of compounds and very similar to what was published before uh, by Haik and collaborators. Uh, here we have seen that our main hits, they were, they, that were decreasing at least 25% of the level of senescence uh, were highlighted here. And then we passed for several rounds of validation and optimization until we got to our main lead compound, uh, OS1. So OS1 has been shown to be able to reduce uh, the, the level of senescence from 25 to 40%. And we have validated in at least three different donors uh, using cells uh, from donors of 71 to 90 years old. We also have uh, tested or validated OS1 in this photoaging model. So basically we have exposed fibroblasts derived from two different donors of 30 years and 79 years. And by exposing to different levels of UVB radiation, we could increase the level of senescent cells. And then we could prevent the accumulation or decrease the total amount of senescent cells by treating with OS1 different dose. So we can see this significant uh, reducement of the level of senescent cells in both cell lines. So finally, we are combining all these three pieces. So here we have these aged skin models that we have grown and we have then tested with OS1 and we have compared with retinoic acid. That's still the main, uh, the gold standard molecule for rejuvenation uh, products. And what we have seen is that OS1 not only improves the, the skin histology and this morphological organization, and we can characterize that uh, with a score where we evaluate several parameters of the histology. And then we can see that this skin resembles more a younger skin. So this increases the skin health score. Uh, and it also decreases the skin biological age uh, in a larger extent if we compare to retinoic acid. And very interestingly, what we can acid causes uh, the cell renewal and the upper layers of your skin are coming out. So this is a very well-known peeling effect that's usually associated with inflammation and potentially long-term damage to your skin. So here we have formulated OS1 in a topical treatment in a topical cream, and then we have treated uh, skin explants. So these are natural human skins. We got this from leftover of plastic surgeries. And what we can see is that our treatment increases this epidermal thickness uh, that we can quantify here in this graph. And then this is not observed with retinol. And again, we have seen a decrease in the skin biological age when we have assessed the methylation markers and using our algorithm. So this pro shows that we are not only improving, you know, the, the histological uh, structure of the skin, but we also reducing this biological age. And then before we go to clinical studies, we have assessed all the safety profile of OS1 
Most of these studies were performed by third party CROs. Uh, so we have assessed cell toxicity, mutagenesis, and even sensitization and irritation in human studies. And so far, we have not seen any adverse effects, what makes us very confident to move forward to clinical studies and to start planning to bring this product to the market. So here in this clinical study, uh, we enrolled 22 patients and they were treated for 12 weeks. And we could see not only an improvement in several aspects of skin health in terms of appearance, in terms of firmness, elasticities, and the overall uh, skin appearance. But we also saw very interesting and significant improvement in the skin barrier. Uh, up to 15%. Uh, and this, the skin barrier is related to the skin function. And this is the main purpose of our products to really to promote skin health. So we were gladly to see this correlation from our in vitro data to reflect in this improvement uh, in the clinical data that in this case, this was measured by an instrument. So it's a very uh, precise evaluation is not subjective like other parameters. So the last piece is that uh, since OS1 is targeting cellular senescence, we are wondering if there could be other applications beyond the skin. So the first experiment that we did to uh, explore this hypothesis was to uh, evaluate lifespan expansion, extension uh, in C. elegans. That's a very well-known uh, aging model. And we have seen an increase of 16 to 21% in the median lifespan. But more interesting than that, when we analyze the health span or the motility, uh, the ones treated with OS1, they were more active throughout their whole life. So. Some of, so in the later stages of life, we can see that some, the majority of the, those worms, they were still highly active, uh, sometimes up to three, more than 300% compared to the control. And, and basically that's what is very interesting in terms of translating to health span and to translate it from, you know, better quality of life. So just very preliminary data, but very exciting in thinking, uh, when we think about other applications of this molecule. So when skin is starting uh, with a skin health solution first, because this is the safest and fastest uh, route to the market, but our long-term vision is really to explore the applications for other longevity and age-related indications. I'm also excited to announce that our product will be launched next week uh, on October 21st. So for those that are, that are interested, I, I suggest to subscribe to our mailing list. We have initially a lim limited edition of this first batch, but um, it's, it's very exciting to finally get this product to the market. And I want to appreciate all the work that the, this team has been putting together. I'm very proud of this uh, female leadership. So we have five PhDs in our team. We are combining expertise in stem cell biology, tissue engineering, uh, computational biology, and aging. And now we are also growing our marketing team since we are bringing this product to the market. So building all the operations and all the commercialization side of the business. And I'm also very pleased to uh, share our board of advisors. We have, you know, uh, longevity experts and, you know, such as Peter Diamandis that has been supporting us and also Sergio Quimillo that has been helping with financing and um, fundraising. And we have collaborated with um, top leading scientists in the aging and the skin health uh, field. So that's what I brought for today. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions and thank you all for the attention. Great. Carolina, that was excellent. Thank you. Uh, I just have one question. Uh, so is the product approved by the SD, uh, FDA? 
No. Or are you not making any medical claims? Is that no, it? No, no, yeah, that's correct. We bring as a cosmetic. So uh, since we proved the safety, we can bring as a cosmetic, and then we needed to be restricted to cosmetic claims in terms of improving the appearance, firmness, uh, but not talking too much about the the function of the peptide in a more molecular level. Okay. Well, will you still be conducting uh, clinical trials on, on that? And what would be the endpoints there? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, what we, we already, we have been doing several consumer studies and we have seen uh, people reporting that's improving, for example, their rosacea or their, um, what are the other, maybe psoriasis. So based on this feedback that we get from our consumers, we are going to choose the indication that we could go after, focus on skin disorders. Um, and then later on, we will be also exploring other indications not related to skin. Thank you very much, Carolina. Yes, thank you so much.